The shrill whistle of incoming artillery pierced the air as I huddled in the muddy trench, clutching my plasma rifle with trembling hands. Explosions thundered around me, showering me with clods of dirt. The once lush jungle of planet Aatrox 6 had been reduced to a hellish wasteland, pockmarked with craters and littered with the charred remains of my fallen Kroven comrades. As a fresh recruit in the Kroven Expeditionary Force, I had shipped out from my homeworld of Trelos filled with patriotic fervor, eager to defend our mining colony from the Zandari invaders. But nothing could have prepared me for the sheer brutality of the front lines. Within weeks, our forces had been decimated, outgunned, and outmaneuvered at every turn by the technologically superior Zandari. Now, as the last surviving member of my platoon, I knew my time had come. A searing pain shot through my chest and I looked down to see a metal shard protruding from my gray-scaled flesh, indigo blood oozing out around it. My vision began to swim as shock set in. So this is how it ends, I thought bitterly, forgotten and alone on some backwater planet, abandoned by my own kind. I closed my eyes, ready to embrace the void. Hey, stay with me! An unfamiliar voice roused me back to consciousness. I forced my eyes open to see an alien face hovering over me, unlike any species I had encountered before. It had pale pinkish skin, a shock of red fur on its head, and piercing green eyes filled with concern. I flinched, mandibles clacking weakly as if to ward off this new threat. But the creature made no move to harm me. Instead, it raised its free hand, palm outward, in a universal gesture of peace. Then with slow, deliberate movements, it slung its weapon across its back and knelt down beside me. Easy there, big guy, it said, its alien features arranging themselves into what I could only assume was meant to be a reassuring expression. I'm not gonna hurt you, I'm here to help. Help? The concept was so incongruous with my current situation, I could only stare in uncomprehending silence. What help could there be for a soldier gut shot and abandoned on the battlefield? In Kroven culture, the grievously wounded were expected to embrace an honorable death, not weigh down their comrades with the burden of tending to their torn flesh. Yet this stranger seemed undeterred by the ruin of my body. It produced a small metallic device from a pouch at its belt and aimed it at my face. I tensed, but instead of a weapon's discharge, the gadget emitted only a soft chime and a flash of blue light. Kroven physiology detected it announced in a flat, synthetic version of my native tongue, commencing Xenolinguistic Interface Protocol. The creature smiled, apparently pleased. Unilink translator, it explained, should let us communicate. I'm Sergeant Jenna Murphy, UTEF First Recon. Combat medic, what's your name, soldier? K. Cryos, I managed to rasp, still struggling to process this bizarre turn of events. Sentinel Cryos, Kroven Expeditionary Force. Murphy gave a curt nod. Okay, Cryos, I won't lie, you're in rough shape, but if you let me, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you breathing. You with me? I could only bob my head mutely. None of this made any sense. I was trained to expect no quarter from the enemy, yet this alien soldier was offering to save my life. Such compassion from an armed foe defied all understanding. But as Murphy set to work with brisk efficiency, unconcerned by the sticky spatter of my blood on its armor, I found myself clinging to its promise of deliverance. Confusion could wait. For now, I simply yearned to live. The medic produced a canister of gelatinous foam and sprayed it liberally into my chest and abdominal cavity, stanching the worst of the bleeding. Next came a syringe of icy liquid that swept blessed numbness through my veins. As the pain receded, I watched in fascination while it pulled out the splinters with delicate precision and wound my intestines back into place sealing the rents with some manner of adhesive laser. Your medics, I wheezed as it worked. They do this? Rush into battle, heal the enemy? Murphy shrugged. Heal anyone who's hurt. Don't much care what side they're on. A life's a life. Out here, we're all just trying to survive. I shook my head in wonderment. A perplexing philosophy. But I could not argue with the results as the medic finished its ministrations and helped me to sit upright. The pain was still intense but I no longer felt death's chill breath upon my neck. Cryos, I need to call in a transport to get you out of here, Murphy said. My squad's not far. I want you to wait. A shrill whine split the air and the human's head snapped up. I followed its gaze to see a new host of Zandari grav tanks cresting a distant ridge and hurtling in our direction. 
Murphy bit out a harsh alien curse. Change of plans. We need to move. Now. It gripped my arm, hauling me upright with surprising strength for its size. I swayed and tottered, but stayed standing. The medic unslung its weapon once more. Come on, Cryos, let's get you someplace safe. The Zandari can have this rock, but I'll be damned if they get you too. The human's powerful arm around my shoulders was all that kept me from collapsing as we stumbled across the ravaged battlefield. My savage body screamed in protest at every jolting step, but I gritted my teeth and pushed onward. Capture by the Zandari was not an option. Murphy guided us into a jagged canyon, seeking shelter from the whining grav tanks. My heart's hammered painfully against my battered chest as the high-pitched keening drew nearer. There was nowhere to hide. We couldn't possibly outrun them. This human had saved my life only to have us both cut down moments later. But Murphy seemed unconcerned. It tapped a panel on its gauntlet and spoke calmly into it. Raider 1, this is Raider 2. I have a wounded Kroven guard requiring immediate evac. Transmitting coordinates, over. A burst of garbled speech emerged in reply, too distorted for my translator to parse. The human listened intently, then gave a grim nod. Roger that, Raider 1. We'll be waiting. No sooner had it spoken than a roar shook the canyon. But this was no Zandari tank. The sound was deeper, throatier, rattling my bones with its bass growl. I craned my neck upward in time to see a squat, powerful vessel thunder out of the sky on plumes of blue-white fire. It barreled towards us at reckless speed, pulling up at the last possible instant to hover on a cushion of rippling air. Murphy let out a whoop of pure exhilaration. Our ride's here, it called over the howling engines. Come on, Cryos, let's get you patched up properly. The medic all but carried me up the ship's lowered ramp into a hold crammed with humans in identical armor. There was a chorus of urgent chatter, a babble of unfamiliar terms. Murphy, Raider, Dustoff, Nightingale. I paid them no heed. All I could focus on was the team of white-clad medics swarming forward with a floating stretcher urging me to lie back, to be still, to let my broken body rest. I had no strength left to resist. As the ramp ground shut and the ship lurched into the air once more, I surrendered to the gentle hands and soothing voices. Someone pressed a mask to my face and I breathed in a cool, tingling mist. The clamor and chaos around me began to blur, fading into gray. The last thing I remembered was Sergeant Murphy's face above me, still smiling that uncanny human smile. You're gonna be okay, Cryos, it said, clasping my limp hand in its own. We'll get you home. Then I spiraled down into velvet blackness and knew no more. I awoke to the sterile white glare of an unfamiliar medbay. For a moment, I could only blink in groggy confusion, wondering if I had joined the spirit realm after all. But the dull ache in my torso and the pinch of fluid lines in my arms confirmed that I still clung to the mortal coil. Machines beeped and hummed around me, displaying esoteric readouts in alien script. The bed was too small, the blanket too thin, but it was blessedly dry and clean, free of the clinging stench of blood and sweat and smoke. A door hissed open and a human strode in, clad not in armor but a long white coat. It wielded a handheld data scroll rather than a rifle, yet still it moved with the brisk efficiency I had come to associate with its species. Ah, Sentinel Cryos, it exclaimed upon seeing me awake. Excellent, you're recovering well. Faster than we anticipated, actually. You, Kroven, are a resilient bunch. I struggled to sit up straighter, ignoring the twinge of pain from my bound midsection. Where, where am I? What happened? You're aboard the UTEF hospital ship Nightingale, in high orbit above Aatrox 6. Sergeant Murphy and Raider Squad brought you to us after extracting you from the hot zone. The doctor consulted its scroll. You sustained heavy damage. Perforated bowels, lacerated liver, shattered ribs, severe blood loss. Frankly, it's a miracle you survived. But thanks to Murphy's quick thinking and our trauma staff's expertise, I expect you'll make a full recovery. I absorbed this information in silent astonishment. I had been so certain of my imminent demise. To have escaped that fate to owe my life to these bizarre, soft-fleshed aliens, dot, 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 it defied belief. I don't understand it, I said at last. Why would you do this? Why expend such resources on an enemy soldier? It makes no sense. The doctor cocked its head, forehead creasing. Why wouldn't we? You were critically wounded. 
Our mission is to provide care to any who need it, regardless of species or allegiance. But I thought all humans were warriors, conquerors. I'd seen them fight, witness the deadly efficiency of their strike teams. Belatedly, I wondered if I was in fact a prisoner, plucked from the battlefield to serve as a source of intelligence. The doctor stifled a chuckle. No, no, I mean, yes, we have our military, the UTEF forces who run search and rescue ops, like the one that saved you. But most of us are just people, doctors, engineers, diplomats, scientists. Our strength lies in our diversity, and our highest laws decree that all sentient life has inherent worth, even those we might clash with. I shook my head, struggling to parse this alien concept. Croven warriors do not ascribe worth to the enemy, and we certainly do not extend aid to the fallen. The battlefield is a crucible meant to cull the weak. Only the strong survive. An uncompromising worldview, the doctor said diplomatically, but the human philosophy is rather different. We believe that every life is precious, that mercy and compassion are what elevate us above mere beasts, that the mightiest warrior can also be a healer. It gave a rueful smile, but such discussions can wait. You need rest, Sentinel. Give your body a chance to mend. It tapped a command into its scroll and the medbay lights dimmed, the machines quieting to a low, soothing thrum. Sleep, you're safe here. The Nightingale is a place of healing for all, no matter their banner. When you wake, we can talk more. I wanted to argue, to demand further answers, but a wave of exhaustion dragged at me, the lingering drugs in my blood blurring the world to watercolor softness. I felt my eyes flutter closed, my questions fading into the haze. But as I drifted off into dreamless slumber, I found myself focusing on that single unbelievable phrase, a place of healing for all. What a preposterous notion. And yet, was it possible? Could there truly be more to this existence than the pitiless calculus of survival, the endless bloody climb to supremacy? Might there be another path, one walk not in conquest, but in unity? They were dangerous thoughts, radical, heretical even, by the harsh tenets of Croven dogma. But with the memory of that small, stubborn human standing over me, fighting for my life even as my own kind left me for carrion, I couldn't help but wonder. And as the gentle embrace of the drugs tugged me into oblivion, I mused that perhaps there was something to be said for compassion after all. I awoke some indeterminate time later, my natural rhythms disrupted by injury in the unfamiliar environment. The medbay was dimly lit in deference to the ship's artificial night cycle, the faint glow of medical displays casting long shadows on the bulkheads. The pain in my chest had receded to a manageable ache, and I felt more alert than I had since the battle. As if sensing my return to consciousness, the door hissed open to admit Sergeant Murphy. The human looked weary, its short crimson fur musts face lined with fatigue, but it mustered a smile upon seeing me sitting up in bed. Hey there, big guy, it said, pulling up a chair with a groan. Doc says you're doing great. Knew you were a tough one. I shifted awkwardly, unsure how to process such casual praise from a member of a species I had been taught to revile. I thank you, Sergeant, for saving me. The words felt strange on my tongue, but I forced them out regardless. I am in your debt. Murphy waved a hand dismissively. Nah, no debts. Like I said, it's what we do. Leave no one behind, human or otherwise. Its expression sobered. I'm just sorry we couldn't get there sooner. Maybe we could have saved more of your unit. I blinked, taken aback by the genuine sorrow in the human's voice. As if it truly regretted the loss of Croven lives, warriors whose deaths it should by all rights celebrate. I shook my head in bafflement. I do not understand you, Sergeant Murphy. Your kind confound me. To risk your own life for that of an enemy dot 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 IT goes against everything I have been taught, everything I have ever known. The human leaned forward, resting its elbows on its knees. Believe it or not, we humans used to think pretty similarly. Millennia of constant warfare, endless cycles of conquest and subjugation. We nearly destroyed ourselves more times than I can count. I cocked my head intrigued despite myself. What changed? Murphy's gaze turned distant. We did, slowly, painfully. We realized that as powerful as our drive to compete and dominate was, it would only lead us to ruin, 
that if we wanted to survive, to grow, we had to find a new way, a better way. The sergeant gestured expansively, taking in the med bay, the ship, the glittering field of stars beyond the viewport. That's what the United Terran Expeditionary Force is about, what humanity is about now. We're not perfect, not by a long shot, but we're trying, trying to be more than our base instincts, to reach out to other species with open hands instead of closed fists, to foster cooperation, not strife. I considered this, mandibles flexing pensively. It was an appealing notion, I had to admit, the idea that a species could consciously choose to rise above its primal nature, to forge a path guided by higher ideals. But doubt gnawed at me. It is an admirable philosophy, I said slowly, but surely not all species would be receptive to such overtures. There will always be those who only respect strength, who exploit mercy as a weakness. How do you contend with threats that cannot be placated or reasoned with? To my surprise, Murphy threw back its head and laughed. Oh, we're not afraid to fight when we have to. We didn't claw our way to the stars by rolling over for every bully that came along. The UTEF will go to the wall to defend the innocent from those who would do them harm. The human's green eyes dinted with steely resolve. But we don't lash out in fear or aggression. We don't kill when we can disable, destroy when we can negotiate. Our strength isn't just in our weapons, it's in our principles in our commitment to being a beacon of hope rather than a harbinger of annihilation. I mulled over the sergeant's words, feeling a strange, unfamiliar sensation kindling in my breast. Not the raging fire of Croven battle-lust, but something softer, a flicker of cautious awe threaded with the faintest stirrings of envy. Envy for a species able to temper its warrior spirit with compassion, to channel its fierce drive into the service of life, rather than wallowing in an endless cycle of blood and loss. In that moment, I felt a sudden, soul-deep weariness for the merciless creed that had ruled my every waking moment since birth. Perhaps, perhaps there was another way. A path where I need not measure my worth only in enemies slain and worlds conquered. Where the content of my character mattered more than my kill tally. The notion was terrifying, almost sacrilegious. But with the memory of Murphy standing over my broken body, fighting to save what Croven doctrine would deem a worthless husk, I couldn't suppress a tremor of yearning, of desperation to believe that there could be more to my existence than the flash of a pulse blade and the crunch of shattered chitin. Some of my inner turmoil must have shown in my expression, for Murphy reached out to place a gentle hand on my forearm. I twitched at the contact, but did not pull away. This is a lot to take in, I know, the human murmured. Your whole world turned upside down. But for what it's worth, I think you've got a chance to make a real difference here, Cryos, to be part of building a better future for Croven and humankind alike. I huffed out a rasping chuckle, the absurdity of the concept startling me. Me? I am a lone grunt, not a leader, a cog in the Croven war machine. What difference could I possibly make? Murphy's grip tightened. All the difference in the universe. Change starts with individuals, with people willing to question the status quo to imagine a different path forward. You've seen firsthand the lengths humans will go to protect life in all its forms. Imagine if you could bring that perspective back to your people. Help them see that there's more to existence than conquest and slaughter. They would not listen, I protested, even as a wild, desperate hope flared in my chest. I would be branded a heretic, a traitor, exiled if not executed, maybe, Murphy conceded, but maybe not. Maybe your experience here, your story, could be the catalyst for a new era of peace between our species. At the very least, it could open some eyes, plant some seeds. We've got to start somewhere. I fell silent, overwhelmed by the magnitude of what the human was proposing. To turn my back on everything I had ever known, to champion an ideology antithetical to the very core of Croban identity, it was madness. It was suicide. And yet, was a life spent mired in endless war truly living? Was there not a nobility, a fierce, defiant glory, in daring to strive for something more, in choosing to stand for light amidst the darkness, no matter the cost? In that moment, I felt the stirrings of a resolve unlike any I had ever known. Not the ruthless, single-minded focus of a Croven berserker, but something deeper, the determination to forge a new path 
guided not by the blind adherence to tradition, but by the shining beacon of an ideal, an ideal embodied by the strange, soft creature before me, with its stubborn refusal to abandon even a hated foe to the jaws of death. I met Murphy's gaze, compound eyes to green, and saw reflected there a glimmer of understanding, of kinship. The human smile bright and fierce, and I felt an answering ember kindle in my own breast. I will try, I said, my voice raw and halting. I do not know if I will succeed, but I will try to be an emissary of your way, of, of peace. Murphy's grin widened. It clasped my hand in both of its own, five fingers lacing with three. That's all anyone can ask, Cryos. And for what it's worth, I think you've got what it takes. You survived that hellhole of a battlefield. You opened your mind to a whole new way of thinking. That takes guts. That takes a special kind of strength. The human stood, squeezing my hand one last time before releasing it. Get some rest, heal, and when you're ready, we'll talk about how to get you started on this new mission. You're not in this alone. The UTEF looks after its own, and as far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. With that, Sergeant Murphy strode from the med bay, leaving me alone with my churning thoughts and the glimmering ember of purpose burning in my heart. I knew the path ahead would be fraught with peril and hardship, that I would face resistance and hostility from my own kind, revulsion at my betrayal of Croban values. But I also knew with a fierce, unshakable certainty that this was a cause worth fighting for, that if I could sway even one of my brethren to see the human way, to reject the cold calculus of unending conflict, then any sacrifice would be worthwhile. For I had seen the future in Sergeant Jenna Murphy's eyes, a future of unity, of redemption, a future where Croven and human stood not as enemies, but as partners in the great dance of the cosmos. And I knew that I would give my all to make that future a reality. As I sank back against the pillows, I felt a smile tug at my mandibles. An alien expression, but somehow fitting for the being I had become, the being I was becoming. Sentinel Cryos was dead, his husk left to molder on the killing fields of Aatrox VI. In his place rose a new creature, baptized in the fire of human compassion, a soldier not of conquest, but of mercy, an emissary of the shining path. It would be a long, hard road, but I would walk it with pride, guided by the light of an ideal that transcended species or creed, an ideal embodied in three simple words, uttered with all the conviction of a warrior's battle cry, leave no one behind.